newly released, heavily redacted CIA document show the Bush administration's torture policies caused 9-11 mastermind Khadi Sheikh Mohammed to lie about where we could find Osama bin Laden. Our third story in the countdown, further evidence that not only were Gitmo detainees abused and tortured, but surprise, if you torture someone, they may lie to make you stop. The documents obtained by the ACLU came from the questioning of detainees by the U.S. military about their treatment at Gitmo. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was waterboarded, tortured 183 times. I make up stories just location of Osama bin Laden. He spoke in obviously broken English. Where is he? I don't know. Then he tortured me. Then I said, yes, he's in this area. I said, no, they torture me. Contrast with this, President Bush nearly three years ago. Once in our custody, KSM was questioned by the CIA using these procedures. And he soon provided information that helped us stop another planned attack on the United States. There is more details of the questioning and torture of other detainees, including Abu Zubaydah, who was then thought to be al-Qaeda's number three man. He talked about months of suffering and torture, from which he says he is still not recovered. Then his torturers apologized, as if that would make it all go away, telling him, sorry, we discover you are not number three, not a partner, not even a fighter. Jonathan Landay is a senior national security and intelligence correspondent for McClatchy Newspapers, and he joins us once again from Washington. Thank you again for your time tonight, sir. My pleasure. Setting aside what, what would be an increasingly moot debate about the usefulness of torture, for years the Bush administration got away with leaving this impression that we were at least vaguely aware of where Osama bin Laden probably was. Do we know if that assumption was predicated on Khalid Sheikh Mohammed lying in the way he described he's in this area? I don't think so. Look, the Bush administration has a gleaming record of using bogus and, and bogus and exaggerated intelligence to make cases about Al Qaeda, about Iraq. But I don't think this is the case here. Uh, we know that uh, that uh, uh, OBL, that Osama bin Laden, was at uh, um, Tora Bora, where he had a, a major base on the border of Pakistan, and that while uh, he left behind uh, uh, a, a, a rear guard, he fled across the border into the tribal areas of Pakistan. So I don't think in this case that they were relying on, Abu, on, on, on KSM's information. The information that came out of, of people like this, and especially the simple descriptions of you know, what these men would do when faced with torture, given all the revelations of erroneous information and bad leads from, from people we tortured, is there a point at which the CIA or the government as a whole might have to issue some sort of conclusion that uh, indeed all information that was produced at Guantanamo should be assumed to be useless unless it has been independently verified? Well, the Obama administration has said publicly that 50 to 100 people who are being held at Guantanamo can neither be put on trial or can be let go. And it's safe to assume, I think, that some of those who can't be mm -hmm. put on trial can't be put on trial because the information that was obtained in their cases was obtained by uh, what a lot of people call torture. So I think that this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are calling, a lot of some people on the Hill and others are calling for the convening of some kind of a truth commission, some kind of congressional investigation, official congress uh, investigation by the Justice Department, special prosecutor, into exactly what was behind uh, the use of these methods and what kind of information they produced. Meantime, this story of Abu Zubaydah, this is almost the American version of, of, of Kafka. He not only told of plots that he not, knew nothing about, but he gave up trying to convince the people who were his captors that he was not who they thought he was. He just kept telling them stuff and they just kept, we just kept buying it. Well, the fact is that you, don't ha you didn't just have President Bush talking about him as being the chief of operations of al-Qaeda. Of al you had uh, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld talking about if he may not be the number two, he's very close associate of uh, Osama bin Laden. You had the former head of the CIA, General Michael Hayden, talking about how he had been the source of a great m amount of information that the United States had on al-Qaeda. And then it turns out that, in fact, he, it appears that he was what he said said he was, A, not a member of al-Qaeda, and B, just a guy who, who ran some safe houses in Pakistan from which he would guide uh, people going into training camps in, Pakistan, in Afghanistan. He would facilitate their crossing the border. And he, when they came out, he would facilitate their travel to places like Chechnya and Bosnia. Last point. Uh, at the end of the week, CIA is going to release the Inspector General's 2004 report, which questioned legality and effectiveness of coercive interrogations. Do we have any idea what we're going to find? 
We do know one thing that the report concluded, and that's according to these uh, declassified memos from the Justice Department in which that refer to uh, a finding in this report that said that based on everything that the uh, CIA IG had seen, there was no firm evidence that anything that was obtained using these aggressive, abusive t interrogation techniques had produced uh, evidence or information on an imminent plot threatening the United <sighs> States. That much we know. But I think there will be other revelations, very, very important revelations, perhaps about the way the CIA IG viewed the entire legal uh, justifications for the use of, of these aggressive, abusive techniques. The mind reels. It's like one of those what's wrong with these pictures, only it's reversed. It's what's right with this, with this picture. Is there anything we can find in it that still is? Uh, Jonathan Landay of McClatchy Newspapers, as always, our great thanks. My pleasure.